Merry Christmas, brothers and sisters. Our entrance hymn, Shanti Noel, hymn number 63 in the hymn books. We welcome our celebrant, Monsignor Esau Joseph.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, dear sisters and brothers, as we celebrate once again the great feast of the Holy Family. It's one of the, the last feasts of this year before we enter the new year, so thanking God for this great privilege. It's always a time when we attend this Holy Mass to thank God for our own families because of what we have achieved in life and who we became eventually depending a lot and of course credited to their input in our earlier years and what they taught us. So thank God for our own families who brought us into this world and have assisted us along our own journey. Dear sisters and brothers, let us truly acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
shining example of the holy family graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the values and virtues of good family life in the bonds of charity so in the joy of your house delight one day in your eternal rewards through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the first book of Samuel, chapter 1, verses 20 to 22 and 24 to 28. Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son, and called him Samuel, since she said, I asked the Lord for him. When a year had gone by, her husband Elkanah went up again with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow. Hannah, however, did not go up. Having said to her husband, not before the child is weaned, then I will bring him and present him before the Lord and he shall stay there forever. When she had weaned him, she took him up with her together with a three-year-old bull an ephah of flour and a skin of wine. And she brought him to the temple of the Lord at Shiloh. And the child was with them. They slaughtered the bull, and the child's mother came to Eli. She said, If you please, my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you, praying to the Lord. This is the child I prayed for. And the Lord granted me what I asked him. Now I make him over to the Lord for the whole of his life. He is made over to the Lord. There she left him for the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. John, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, and the 21 to 24. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, and that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. My dear people, if we cannot be condemned by our own conscience, we need not be afraid in God's presence. And whatever we ask him, we shall receive because we keep his commandments and live the kind of life that he wants. His commandments are these, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another as he told us to. Whoever keeps his commandments lives in God and God lives in him. We know that he lives in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. of Jesus used to go to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up for the feast as usual. When they were on their way home after the feast, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem without his parents knowing it. They assumed he was with the caravan. It was only after a day's journey that they went to look for him among their relations and acquaintances. When they failed to find him, they went back to Jerusalem looking for him everywhere. Three days later, they found him in the temple, sitting among the doctors, listening to them and asking them questions. And all those who heard him were astounded at his intelligence and his replies. 
They were overcome when they saw him, and his mother said to him, My child, why have you done this? See how worried your father and I have been looking for you. Why were you looking for me, he said. Did you not know that I must be busy with my father's affairs? But they did not understand what he meant. He then went down with them and came to Nazareth and lived under their authority. His mother stored up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, as you probably realize, all the readings from the Bible chosen for this feast day revolve around that unit, that basic unit of society, the family, to which all of us have contributed and have benefited in so many different ways from family life. Of course, there are so many things we could talk about family life. I suppose in one mass, <laughs> there's not enough time to talk about this particular issue of how this is so important for the society and as you and I know if you have a healthy basic good family life in a society the whole society will be healthy good kind loving it will be a reflection of this basic unit that starts off the building block of the community as it were so celebrating the face of the Holy Family so closely after the, the Christmas celebration to remind us that yes, at the end of the day, we didn't choose who our mothers will be or who our fathers will be. That was a choice made by the divine power of God. And therefore, the first thing we have to do is to thank God for our parents, mothers and fathers, and all those who contributed to all the different areas on which we have excelled and achieved along this journey of life. Sometimes, as you know, they may have passed on, but the influence still remains. And it's still like almost that they live with us every single day. I mean, I'm sure it has happened to you before. Sometimes you know, I call a friend and the son and and the voice, it's so, I don't recognize the difference. And I talk and talk and talk and talk. And then suddenly I realize that the man's son is so similar. So sometimes, and same things with the, with, the, with the girls, so that they, they pass on to their children these qualities and these values and these virtues that they even reflect the mannerism and all the other qualities that they exude. So that that is, again, the grace of Almighty God. And the fact that we celebrate the Holy Family as a feast is almost as if um, we are saying, you know, at the end of the day, this family life is a mystery. It is a great mystery from God, the way how he himself decided who should be born where, who should grow up with who, who should be the parents of this one and the other one. That is the divine hand of Almighty God. But it goes right back to this disposition of open our hearts to God. And the first reading from the book of Samuel talks about that. Someone once said, the closest love that reflects the love of God is the love of a mother. And that is seen today in this episode of how this Hannah, this great woman, begged God for a child. Even before he was born, she's praying for him, asking God to grant him all the graces and the goodness. And of course, a mother's prayer is always from the heart. We have seen that over and over, the story of Monica and her son Augustine, she prayed, and God in his own wisdom and in his time answered the prayer of her mother because that is from deep within the depths of her heart. And she prayed and prayed and prayed, and yes, God gave her a son. And again, even the names that we gave to children, that was now our choice. Our parents have that great privilege to call us different names and so on, and they choose that name for a particular reason. In the case of Samuel, the mother chose that name because Samuel, more or less, the, the translation will be like a child of God, basically. 
So she chose that particular name and then after the child was born, she prayed and prayed and Samuel, as we know, became this great person in the Old Testament. And one can say, the, the reading is trying to tell us what we become in life sometimes is the response and the answering to the prayers of our mothers. So it is really an interesting story to remind us that prayer, of course, is one of the the occupation and the disposition of a good, holy family. And, and the family life, as you know, has changed as the evolving way of how um, families have been changing over the time. We, long ago, we used to have the extended family where grandmothers and grandparents lived with their children. And even when the brothers and the sisters got married, they lived in the same you know, territorial household. And that extended family is more or less um, phasing out and we have now the nuclear, well, nuclear family with husband, wife and children and that also is um, becoming um, different these days. But anyway, the evolving society has shown us that family life um, is something that we need to look at because that contributes so much to the healthy um, functioning of a good society. There are so many things we could talk about dysfunctional families, but that again is another reality that we have to face. But the second reading from St. John reminds us that there is another kind of family beside the biological one that we are accustomed to. That is to say the extended family of God. That is all of us here gathered. St. John will say, we are the family of God. He is our father, we are his children. And he spoke about the golden commandment that Jesus left for us. And my dear sisters and brothers, it is difficult sometimes to, to fully obey the Son because when Jesus said, okay, love yourself and love God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself, he's referring to that extended family. And the whole essence of a true Christian is if you can see someone, not your biological relation, and treat that person as if that person is your own sister or your own brother, how we treat them at home, I think that is what St. John is saying. That is really and truly the extended family of God. And I hope that you have found persons like that who treat you like you don't, know, you really belong. And there is no sort of condescending manner, and they treat you almost as if you belong to their family. And that is what St. John is saying. By and large, we are the extended family of God. And then St. Luke's Gospel gave us for this feast day today, this episode of, actually it is often called the fifth, fifth joy, is it fifth joyful, fifth joyful mystery, the finding of Jesus in the temple, it's a fifth joyful mystery. And again to remind us that it is a mystery, how it is that this episode occurred in the life of the Holy Family. Every year, the parents of Jesus used to go to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. Now, the Passover was a high point of all the Jewish celebrations. And this Passover that reminded them of the liberation from Egypt when they had to slaughter the unblemished lamb, paint the blood on their doorposts, and they ate unleavened bread hastily on the journey far away. And um, they had to celebrate with the little cups of wine and so on. And every year, the Jews will meet to celebrate this festival to thank God for their deliverance and to liberate them from slavery and bondage into the freedom of the promised land that God promised them. And actually, this is one of the oldest celebrations that survive even today in the Middle East. And one of the oldest, thousands, I think it's about five or six thousand years old, this ancient religious ritual that they do every year, still in our own time. And of course, on the Holy Thursday celebration, we as Christians remind ourselves that it was this great Jewish tradition that we inherited the holy sacrifice of the Mass because it was the same Passover celebration that Jesus gave this new meaning, this new dimension, and this new interpretation. But they used to go every single year to watch the priests kill the unblemished lamb and to celebrate. And 
I, it must have been Joseph and Mary teaching the baby Jesus and the boy Jesus, look, you see what the priest is doing? You see what he is doing? That means that, and this means that, and that means that. And so they took him to the temple every year to explain to him what this celebration entailed. Beside the Feast of the Passover, there was another high point of the feast Jewish festival called the Tabernacles. These two feasts were really and truly celebrations that they attended. So he was 12 years old at this episode. 12 years for a Jewish boy was the phase um, just before boyhood to manhood. So they will say, well, that's the time when you begin to, you know, show... Um, your, your, your manly qualities and you show your independence and your ability to sustain life and to be separated from your family. It's like a tra tra transitional phase where they move on. So 12 years old was the time when Jesus went up for the feast as usual. And when he said, why were you looking for me? It was not meant to be disrespectful or to kind of tell them, look, I'm a big man now, leave me alone. It wasn't meant to all he was trying to say is they should have expected him to be so intrigued with the father's business because that is what they taught him from a little boy. Look what the priest is doing. Look what this means that. And, and even, even the day of the presentation, they, from, from an early phase, Jesus learned from Mary and Joseph this devotion and this consecration and this interest and this curiosity about the things of God. And he learned it from them. And at this particular age, he stayed back. Fascinated with the things of God. Asking questions. Listening to them. They were astounded as his, at his intelligence and his replies. So engrossed with this fascination with the things of God, he completely forgot time. Three days passed. And he's still in the temple talking and talking and talking. And, um, you know, when we are really enjoying what we are doing, time really passed. You know, three days passed and Jesus didn't realize that um, his parents were looking for him. In those days, of course, caravan, they used to come through this, what they did, the Damascus Gate, and then after they leave the temple, they will take a caravan from there, I think, to Jericho, and from Jericho to a little way up the road, and then change caravan. So it was a route that was a very familiar route, and the families would travel together, so they just assumed that Jesus would be in one of the caravans traveling up to Nazareth, and when they found out that he was not around, they became so overcome with worry, and anguish and agony and suffering and so on that they began to look for him for three days and the Bible said they looked for him everywhere market square all around the temple they, they didn't they, they probably told everybody had gone home by now why would anybody be in the temple three days after the feast of the Passover and when they did find him they were overcome with joy at this Mystery of finding Jesus discussing about the father's affairs. Sisters and brothers, all of us are concerned with the father's affairs of one kind or another, trying to do the common good. Even your attendance at Mass this morning is some interest in the, the, the affairs of Almighty God. And when Jesus said we have to be busy with the father's affairs, like he did, it's always a reminder every single day, as St. Paul said, get some time to put God first. We all have our um, schedules and our busy routines and so on. Once we put God first and foremost in our lives, the other things, according to the promise, will indeed fall in place. We have to be busy with the Father's affairs, even in times when people are not interested in the church and sometimes, you know, they turn to all different things and their interests are otherwise, we have to be curious enough like Jesus to probe questions, to ask ourselves to learn more about our faith, to deepen our perception, as St. Paul said, to increase our intelligence about spiritual things and to read about all these issues so that we could understand more and more about this great mystery of our God who place us in a particular family for a reason. 
Even after this episode and at age 12, the Bible said Jesus went down and came to Nazareth and lived under their authority. And his mother, of course, stored up all these episodes in her heart, pondering about what God intended for this child and what he was about to accomplish for all of us. And he grew in favor with God and man in state stature and in wisdom until he entered the public life, as you know, at age 33. So one can say between age 12 and age 30, there are many things that we just don't know about the hidden life of Jesus and the interactions that took place with Mary and Joseph. Of course, at age 30, when he appeared, Joseph was nowhere around. That's why we, we believe that Joseph died somewhere just before he entered um, his public ministry and began preaching in the synagogue. And certain things we could just deduce. There's a saying that, you know, once you live under the roof of your mother and father, more or less, you become integrated and bonded, not only in prayer and spiritual duties, but even in our behavioral aspects and virtues and values. You may remember the first miracle that Jesus did, the very first miracle that Jesus did when water was turned into wine. We know the story over and over. And it more or less indicates what some of the hidden things that we just do not know about for those years that Jesus spent with Mary and Joseph. So the wine ran out and you know, Mary noticed that something was going on and she turned to Jesus and said, oh, they have no wine. And Jesus said, okay, my hour has not yet come, and so on. And she politely said, listen, whatever he tell you to do, just do it. Where would she get that from? More than likely, she, growing up with Jesus, she must have seen several times when things were difficult or when they didn't have this or what. And somehow Jesus, with his grace from God and so on was able to provide or help them or assist them and of course Joseph trying to make a decent living working hard and so on and yet they able to survive and she must have known that he had the answer for every possible problem what would he do they have no wine but she said well whatever he want to do let him do it he has the answer for every possible solution and she was right of course, they drank the best wine that they ever tasted. So we just have to celebrate the mystery of family life, the mystery of how God placed us in a particular home. We thank God for our own extended family, all of us gathered here. We pray that we will put the holy family as the ideal family before us and every single day practice something that will remind us, yes, Family life is something holy and we have to try our best to preserve it because the society and the world depend on this basic unit of survival and existence. May God bless our families and especially our mothers and fathers living and dead in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand as we profess our creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We raise our hearts and voices to Almighty God in humble prayer, thanking him for our own families, thanking him that Jesus, who lived with Mary and Joseph for so many years, sanctified family life and made it a holy entity, a holy reality. May families learn more and more from the holy family as they to aspire and strive for holiness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving Father, we pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop Jason Gordon, and all priests of our church. Empower them, guide them, and give them the blessings and grace of this holy season. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to celebrate another Christmas season. May we always live a life that truly represents you, Emmanuel, our God who is with us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty Father, you have blessed us all by calling us your children. May we live with each other reflecting that fact. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Dear Jesus, while you went about doing the affairs of the Father, may we too always be obedient to the guidance of the Blessed Trinity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God, we thank you for our individual families. May we follow the example of your holy family and be a people of service and love to others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we celebrate another Christmas season, may we live in your light and reflect your light of love, peace, and charity to others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Dear Jesus, bless all families. You know the struggles, the pains, the grief, and the joys we have all experienced. Bless us. Strengthen us, console us, and fill us with your peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. With special intentions for Holy Mass, we pray for all families who, in the midst of difficulties and loss of their loved ones and struggles and fears and anxieties, that God will somehow give them the grace to hold together and to hold on to the promises that Jesus made to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Families who are separated and who are struggling to raise up their children, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those celebrating their birthdays, Stacy Eastman, Glenda Carew, and Christopher Ford. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those celebrating their wedding anniversary, Vernon and Amelia Doyle and Anne-Marie and Michael, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For healing for Tara and Nishri Rupchan Singh, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For healing also for Sylvia Ford, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously for all our personal and private needs and intentions as an extended family of God, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who have died this morning, remember Sylvester Ford, Otto, Mary, Brendan, and John Garcia, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Please add your own intentions in a moment of silent prayer. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear. 
Almighty Father, as you taught us through the holy family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, the ideals and the virtues and values of what entail true holiness in a family, may you always give us that grace to be persistent and persevering in prayer. In all our other religious duties, may we become the extended family of God that reflect the, the values of the holy family. May you look at all our humble prayers, the ones mentioned, and those you see deep in the silence of our hearts. As a loving Father, may you answer them all through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. sisters and brothers of my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day of the Holy Family when you manifested the reconciliation and we humbly ask that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph you may establish our families firmly in your grace and in your peace and in your protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, O oh God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awful mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages he has begun to exist in time, and so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels and saints and martyrs of heaven, we praise you here on the earth as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Secretion. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and given thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Savior of the world, oh, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
We remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jason, our Archbishop, and all the clergy, we remember your servants, all our departed brothers and sisters whom we prayed for, whom you, in your wisdom, have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. We remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph and with all the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Charles and with all the saints in heaven who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and former divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn, Mary's Boy Child, hymn number 66.
with this heavenly sacrament most merciful father to imitate constantly the example of the holy family so that after the trials and tribulations and troubles of this world we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord Amen, Amen. Please be seated for the notices Good morning, sisters and brothers. Before we start the notices, let's just keep our brother D'Angelo in prayer. He had to leave because he was not feeling well. So we trust and pray that it's just uh, something minor and that he will be all well and good in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So here are the announcements for this week. So brothers and sisters, we thank God that we are able to come together and fellowship. We understand that change is always difficult, but the protocols are in place to ensure that as far as possible that we can worship our God in safety and in faith. We thank you for your patience and your cooperation with our hospitality team. Masses for this week, Tuesday and Thursday, 6 a.m., Wednesday at 6 p.m. The Blessed Sacrament will be exposed on Wednesday from 5 p.m. Confession will be available on All Year's Morning from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. The Secretary will not be in office this week, but Monsignor will be available before or after the weekday Masses. Please take a flyer and register for your Mass you wish to attend for the season. So we have Mass this evening again at 6 p.m. as we normally do on Sundays. 
and all years, 6 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. New Year's morning, 8 a.m. and then 6 p.m. on New Year's Day. So please, if you don't have a flyer already, please ensure that you take one and register for the Mass that you would like to attend. The Catholic Bible Institute launches their academic year term 2, 2021 to 2022. This commences on the 17th of January, 2022. The schedules, there's a morning two-year cycle where the New Testament will be dealt with. This takes place on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Then there is the evening A cycle, another two-year cycle, where the Old Testament will be dealt with on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5.30 to 8 p.m. And there's a third cycle, an evening B, which is a three-year cycle that will be dealing with the New Testament on Wednesdays from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Sessions will be dealt with via Zoom, and the modules being offered for the Old Testament are Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, and Amos. And for the New Testament, Luke's to Acts will be dealt with, Romans, and also the Lectio Divina. Come join us and hear God speak to you through his living word. You may contact 645-2902. Six four five two nine zero two or six eight eight nine zero two eight six eight eight nine zero two eight or three six eight two three zero eight. That's three six eight two three zero eight. Before you leave. As you know, every year our grace, as Bishop Jason Gordon likes to give us a little gift of love and appreciation. So if you haven't collected it um, yesterday, there is this book that will be, that's available at the front, where each family will be given one. The title may be a little concerning, Life is Messy, by Matthew Kelly, but the content of the book is excellent. This book is about putting our lives back together and allowing ourselves to be put back together when life doesn't turn out as we expected it to. Something we can all relate to in this period of pandemic. If it is you haven't done so as yet, also there is gift from St. Charles Borromeo, our coronavirus prayer card, and behind it, it has the Synod prayer. And inside it, we have our Christmas offering for the clergy, where you can put your love offering for the clergy to support our clergy and ensure that you bring it the next time you are coming to Mass. I invite us to join together. Well, sorry, before we say this in a prayer, brothers and sisters, as you know, the Holy Father has convened a synod throughout the church. His Grace as Bishop Gordon has established a synod team at the level of the Archdiocese, and we at St. Charles have likewise assembled a small team to assist our parish in making input into the overall contribution. Over the next several weeks, the team would be introduced to you and they would outline their work and the expected outcomes. The team looks forward to engaging and spirit-prompted interaction. The team members for St. Charles Borromeo are Melissa, Colin, D'Angelo, and Gary. Please let them have your prayers and support. And as we join in saying our synod prayer, those who have it may join in. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather in your name with you alone to guide us. Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you 
our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All of this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Um, knowing that it's the Christmas season, I don't know if we have any visitors here with us today. No visitors? Anybody celebrating a birthday this today or this week? We have a visit. Sorry, somebody standing up. Oh, a birthday. Oh. Welcome. God bless you. Hope to see you again. Any wedding anniversary? Oh, birthday, brother? Birthday. Happy birthday. God bless you. And any wedding anniversaries today, this coming week? None. Okay, and well, sisters and brothers, I want to take the opportunity for us to welcome back one of our own who we have not seen on our altar for a while, Jelani Difu, who, as you may know, is in the process of discernment, um, heading into the seminary. So, Jelani, welcome. He will probably deal with me behind because he probably was hoping you would have gotten away quietly. Have a blessed day and week, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Same to you, brother. And sister and brother, of course, we are so grateful to the choir and all those who assisted us over all the many masses that we celebrated over this weekend. We really try to make it meaningful and we thank God for their input, all those who contributed to the success of these masses. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Same to you, Father. Thank you all. Our closing hymn, Joy to the World. Hymn number 65.